In this segment we're going to be discussing the relevance and importance of egg turning in the incubation process. So, Peter, um, why do we turn an egg? Do we have to turn an egg? Yes, we do. Um, why? Okay. Egg turning seems to have a major influence on assisting the development of the growing uh, embryo inside that shell. What I'd like you to do, people who want to play with incubation is think about what happens in the wild. That's your, that's your teacher. And our best knowledge of what happens in the wild, those eggs are booted around left, right and centre, no particular sequence, up, down, inside, out or whatever. And there's no question in my mind that this egg turning regime, particularly in the first half of incubation, has a major effect on the viability of the chicken hatching. Okay. We set our incubators at actually 96 times a day. Uh, turning frequency, which it's on rollers, and they rock the egg backwards and forwards. So one way and back the other back way. Back the other way. Some people length have ways. Uh, the, the length ways. Yep. If some people have ideas that if they can turn them whatever way, length or breadth or upside down or whatever, doesn't matter. It's that physical turning of that egg, particularly in the first part of the incubation period, which is important. What happens when you turn the egg is the, the developing embryo then floats, which is sitting just under, under the inner cell membrane, then floats around to a new position into, in the egg. So whatever is the highest portion of that egg, that's where it refloats to. And that therefore means you're, you're agitating the allantoic membrane to what I say are you fresh supplies of album, which is the egg white, and that seems to have uh, a major effect on the developing embryo. If you don't do this, if in other words you parrot eggs, if you only rock them backwards and forwards, for example, uh, or just turn them infrequently, two, three, four, five, six times a day, you get a much reduced rate of development of the allantoic membrane, which is the veins, which you can easily monitor with a good candy light. Okay. okay. Now, so the frequency of turning we touched on before, it was um, a lot. Yes, we do a lot, and it seems to be more critically important in smaller eggs rather than bigger eggs. There's mm -hmm. another little thing too. Mm -hmm. So if you're incubating little lorry eggs and little neophemur eggs and all those sorts of things, high frequency turning is critical. Mm -hmm. and much bigger eggs, it doesn't seem to be that critical, but I still would encourage you to be doing a reasonably frequent turning. Are we doing high frequency turning for the entire incubation period, or is there a key for where we're turning we're, changing, we're changing, the, changing the turning regime. Okay. High frequency turning is critically important until you achieve 100% until you achieve vein development, which in a well incubated egg is going to occur roughly around that 50%, 52% of the incubation period. Once that's happened, you, high frequency turning is actually a negative when you do it based on the way that we normally incubate eggs, which is on rollers. Mm -hmm. right? In the nest box, okay, it's different. The hen bird kicks the egg. Mm -hmm. and it rolls back such that the heaviest part of the egg is the bottom. Mm -hmm. When we stick them on rollers, okay, we turn the egg, it rolls that egg regardless of where the heaviest part of the egg is. Mm -hmm. In the second half of the incubation, the critical thing with turning appears to be getting that chick in the correct position for hatching. Mm -hmm. If we don't turn the egg at all, mm -hmm. and once we've got 100% vein development, that chick will develop normally. Mm -hmm and it will try to hatch, but mm -hmm. more than likely because we haven't turned it, mm -hmm. it will hatch as a malposition. What happens in the second half of incubation, where the great, there is a much larger air cell, mm -hmm. so one part of the egg is much lighter mm -hmm. than the other part, you rock the egg, the egg tends to fall back to where the heaviest part is, which is the base. Mm -hmm. right. In the second half of the incubation, we use rocking incubators, and that proves to be very successful. Rocking as opposed to rolling. That's correct. The yeah. egg is in one position, it rocks back and yeah. forwards. And what happens then is the chick, the heaviest part, falls to the bottom. The air cell is up the highest part up there. It develops, it puts the chick, the head, at the head of the chick, which is the lightest part of the chick, in the most high, highest position. And therefore, in the position for, ex, for first of all, internally pipping into the air cell and externally pipping out through the area. Okay. So when we're turning it in the very beginning, we're turning it every 96 times a day, every 15 minutes. That's correct. Um, how much we're we turning, how far? Well, we normally try and turn it in 180 degrees. Okay. In the, in the second half of incubation, after the first 52%, when the yes. veins are all the way around, 
we're rocking. How, what degrees are we rocking? We're normally only rocking there about 90 degrees. Okay. One side to the other. Okay. When the chick internally pips, drawdown yeah. happens, internally pips, mm -hmm. externally pips. We then move that to a hatcher where there's no turning at all. At the external pipping. At the end. By putting the external pip side at the highest point in the hatcher. But in a, in a hatcher, in a still moving. Yes, no, yes, no, 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 no